I now request Ambassador Her Excellency Mrs. Suchita Durai to deliver her, her message on the occasion of ICCR Foundation Day and on the launch of the Sanskrita. Uh, good evening, Namaskar, Sawadee Kha. Um, as we've already heard from uh, the President of uh, the ICCR, uh, today is a very important day as we commemorate the 71st anniversary of the foundation of the Indian Council for Cultural Relations, uh, ICCR. Um, it was founded in 1950 by uh, Independent India's first education minister, uh, Maulana Abu Kalam Azad. And as we've already heard, the objectives of the ICCR was to actively participate in the formulation and implementation of policies and programs pertaining to India's external cultural relations uh, to foster and strengthen cultural relations and mutual understanding between India and other countries and thirdly to promote cultural exchanges with other countries and people and to develop relations with nations. So in other words, uh, you know, this is cultural diplomacy that the ICCR has been engaged in in the last uh, seven decades and uh, over time this is also, you know, referred to as soft power, uh, which is what, as we heard, um, in the last six years, the government of India has ensured that uh, there's a fresh thrust which is given to ICCR's work uh, in this area. Uh, you know, the ICCR uh, is not only uh, has it played a very important role in the promotion of Indian dance, Indian music, um, yoga, Indian languages uh, abroad, uh, but also, uh, you know, primarily uh, through uh, giving emphasis and promoting Indian ideas, Indian thoughts abroad. So it has been a forum and a vehicle for exchanges of, of ideas and thoughts and many seminars have been held over the years which resulted in the publication of many important texts. Uh, we'll be, uh, you know, uh, also be inspired to, to download this app, including I myself, because uh, uh, I must confess that while I can recite a few hymns here and there uh, and shlokas, but I really uh, do not know Sanskrit. So like the DG ICCR said, uh, this is very attractive for people of all ages. Children definitely will get attracted to this particular kind of an app because it will be a sort of a fun way of learning uh, a language. Apart from this, of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, ICCR is doing good work, of course, in the area of promotion of uh, Hindi. We also have, uh, you know, a, uh, an ICCR chair for Hindi studies uh, in Thailand uh, and also an ICCR chair for Sanskrit studies. and. Um, uh, this has been going on for quite a few years now and uh, I think this has helped uh, in both the countries um, learn through each other's you know, knowledge of these uh, very important uh, languages uh, which open you know, uh, the understanding to each other's cultures as well. Uh, we are also uh, you know, uh, just a few days away from celebrating uh, another great uh, Indian leader uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Uh, Dr. Ambedkar's uh, 130th birth anniversary is coming up very shortly uh, uh, next week and um, uh, we are going to uh, you know hear uh, Dr. Kovit uh, speak uh, in great detail uh, but uh, for, for those who may not know uh, Dr. Uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar uh, is really known uh, to the outside world as the father of the Indian constitution because he was the chair of the drafting committee which uh, you know led to this uh, uh, you know the, the drafting of this great constitution uh, which was adopted by the parliament entered into effect in 1950 um, and made India a republic. So uh, last month in fact uh, uh, we appropriately celebrated uh, the uh, 75th anniversary of our independence, rather launched the beginning of our celebrations through uh, the formal release of the Thai translation of the Indian constitution 
by His Excellency Khun Chuan Lik Pai, uh, you know, the President of the National Assembly of uh, Thailand, the Speaker uh, of uh, the Thai Parliament. <laughs> to concentrate not only to study Sanskrit but also try to read the uh, the most ancient written document found in Southeast Asia. So you know in Southeast Asia the, the earliest inscription it was found in Wokhan in Vietnam which dated back to second or third century AD or CE. It was the oldest Sanskrit inscription. So this is the document that show that the influence of Sanskrit had came to Southeast Asia very long back. And it continued to to be written in Sanskrit until very late in maybe in 13th century. Sanskrit was also still used in Southeast Asia, especially in Cambodia, uh, without the depth of the knowledge of Sanskrit, we cannot understand the depth of the culture of India, of Indian culture, and many things. Art history also depends on the text in Sanskrit. If you don't study Sanskrit, you won't know how the Sankran festival. Actually, it was a festival in Brahmanic uh, ceremony, but adopted among the Buddhists as a Buddhist ceremony. If you do, don't uh, study the Sanskrit text, you won't know that Buddhism also try to integrate some idea, some culture, some thought from Sanskrit language. You know, even in Sukhothai Thai period, you may know that Deepavali was also celebrated in that period. Is it mentioned clearly in the first inscription in Thai language created by King uh, Ram Kamhang, the great of Sukhothai Thai period? That was in the 13th century. It means that uh, the culture of India using Sanskrit also was prevalent in Sukhothai period, not only Buddhism. That's why I, I think that without the uh, thorough knowledge of Sanskrit, you won't be able to understand the depth of the Indian thought, the depth of Indian culture, and the depth of the beauty or the uh, aesthetics of the Indian literature.
Tirupati Surani Raga Since ancient times, India has been a hub of education. Ancient universities at Nalanda, Vikramashila, Bikrampur, Nagarjuna Vidya Pitha attracted foreign students from outside the subcontinent. The Government of India today offers ICCR scholarships to foreign students in the field of culture, science, technology, yoga, Ayurveda, medicine, performing arts, etc. ICCR alumni are India's goodwill ambassadors. It wasn't my first time in India, as my Indian roots gives me liberty to call it my second home. India, a pluralistic, a multilingual, a multi-ethnic society, a fast-growing major economy and a hub for economy, econo information technology services. But to, for me, it holds a special place in my heart. India has been my mentor, my teacher, my guide, my guru, that it has taught me that it has provided me, that it has nurtured me and molded me into a form that can fight any obstacle in my path. And I hope that someday, whatever I have learned from my experiences in India, I will utilize it to help in every little way possible to the country that provided me identity to Thailand. Thank you. Happy. My name is Inkara Siwane Tivit. So I used to get scholarship since 2013 to 2017. So many people came to me and then they asked, I want to dance like Bollywood dance. But then after that I said, yeah, actually that is Bollywood dance. But in Bollywood dance, they have a lot of different style. So which one do you want to know? First, we have to give the knowledge to them. I think now it's time to let Thai people understand about this culture. So that is kind of like you are expect. And uh, in my experience between eight years, uh, I have a lot of good memory in India. But I remember when I went to India my first year, I couldn't understand English or Hindi at all. And all my friends, foreigner friends, Indian friends, and on that time I couldn't know Thai people also because in uh, Sri Rampate Karakina in Delhi, uh, I'm just only one Thai person who studied there. And uh, my guru teach me one thing, you came very far, so you have to learn properly about Indian classical dance because when you go back to Thailand, you must explain the right way. And if you don't know something, so you can call me anytime. Even now I stay in Thailand, but if um, my student asking me some natural search term, but I couldn't understand some point, so I try to call to my Guruji, and then after that Guruji explain to me, and then after that I give the knowledge to my student. I will not let my student or some Thai people if who come to me, I will not give the wrong way because I feel like I should respect India. This performance with a graceful loudly and an extremely high energy legend dance.
Excellencies and my Guruji talk already about the MBC, uh, about the Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedka. So I will talk about uh, some point important uh, regarding the untold story, regarding the Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedka. Um, at the outset, I would like to explain again uh, to ICSR scholarship because uh, if without the ICSR scholarship, uh, my PhD could not have been accomplished and also uh, when I study in India, I got the good chance very, very much and also I really impressed uh, with the ICSR staff very much because when I arrived at Mumbai airport, the ICSR staff come to welcome me and uh, pick up me from the airport to uh, hostel in the University of Pune, including the association of um, Thai students in that town. Okay, so with me, I have a very uh, talented and a really, really great personality here. So I would like you to introduce yourself to our audience. Namaskar, my name is uh, Inkla Siwa Metirit. I'm from Thailand. Uh, now I'm studying uh, eight year in India at Sri Rampate Karakenda and my last year, six year, Papaka, uh, Priyak Sankismiti, Kathak, uh, Jaipukarana. Okay. Yeah. okay, so uh, I've heard that you've been staying in India since past, past eight years, right? Yeah. So what uh, would you like to share to our audience about your experience in India? Uh, actually, I have a lot of good experience in India, but uh, I think I should talk about my first year because my first year, that is my first experience, you know, for, for everything, you know. So on that time, I couldn't understand English or Hindi at all and uh, I don't know how to communicate with people and so and my guru, Indian friends, foreigner friends, everyone just helped me how to speak English and Hindi and uh, what is Guru Shisha Parampara that is very very beautiful for me and it's amazing so when I used to go there every time Guru not just only my uh, teacher but Guru is like uh, a god you know a uh, father, mother and my home also and everything actually if not have guru so i'm not here also so i can say guru shisha param pala that one is very beautiful culture so it feels that you are really um in love and really influenced by the indian culture right yeah yes so uh, i would like to ask you you know what is your favorite aspect of india because we know india has a lot of things to offer so what would be your favorite aspect of india Actually, everything. <laughs> everything I can say. Culture, uh, people, food, uh, clothes, sari, like that. Because when I went to India, I always like to wear sari. You know, not wear jeans or anything like that. And I like to have uh, enjoy with the food also. Uh, so many people asking me, you not miss Thai food? And I said, no, they, I'm enjoying with this thing. Yeah, it's really tasty for me. So I can say everything I love, that is my favorite. I favorite my favorite is Indian country, yeah. Okay. okay, that was really nice and interesting. So, uh, because we have a lot of audiences in India as well as in Thailand, so what would be your message to our audience? Mm, I would like to tell uh, to first Indian people, um, in Thailand we don't have just only Pattaya. Okay. <laughs> so, you can come to enjoy any time. Uh, you everywhere. can go to Chiang yeah, everywhere in Chiang Mai also, south of Thailand also and you can see uh, Thai classical dance and you can see uh, Ramayana also because that is very very uh, popular in Thailand and India yeah, so. and that one we can say uh, our relationship between India and Thailand yeah, yeah because art, uh, Thai art is came Ma, uh, actually, we cannot say like exactly a hundred percent we come from India, but we learn something and we take something from India and then we create our own art, yeah, style like that. And uh, for my message to Thai people, so 
I want they understand about Indian classical more because so many Thai people they couldn't understand about Indian classical and then they thought Bollywood is Indian classical. If they understand about this part, they will understand about Indian culture more as well. When people, when who want to learn about Bollywood dance or classical dance, you no need to know the deep thing, but you know you should know about the simple thing, and that thing is the right way. Because Kaila legs back to India also, yeah. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much. It's not. It's very okay. Cool. <laughs> it's okay. I think people can understand as well. So thank you very much for giving us your time and sharing your really valuable and good insights on India as well. And I hope our audience had a great time with our um, this evening as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.